Good Tuesday to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to today's European Outlook. It is the 14th of January. We're pretty much at the midway point of meteorological winter and we are seeing a transition in the weather pattern through the first 12, 13 days of the month. It has been largely on the cold side. I did show you the anomaly for Europe in yesterday's video and uh, while we had uh, plenty of warmer than average, we have seen a firmly below average UK and Ireland through the first half of January. Question mark is going to be what happens through the middle and second half of this month. Well, certainly the high pressure that had uh, delivered uh, the coldest weather for the month of January since uh, 2010 over the weekend, that's been slowly sinking its way southwards. And uh, as that area of high pressure then moves into the southern UK, we're still in the uh, the chilly conditions across the bulk of England and Wales. These are the temperatures late last night and uh, quite a, an upside down temperature profile as can be seen here. While folks in the southeast of uh, the UK say that where is the mild conditions, we're not seeing it. Uh, well, you've uh, got uh, some chilly conditions remaining in place here under camera conditions. Uh, you get uh, some radiational cooling taking place, but they uh, with the further west and further north you go over the UK, we're in the southwesterly winds and therefore we're seeing the temperatures responding very nicely indeed. If we look at the pressure chart here, it pretty much says, oh, we've got the winds blowing in from our west direction. I say southwest, it's actually more westerly, but uh, we've got higher pressure further south, uh, close to 1040 millibars actually. So it's a fairly strong area of high pressure as can be seen here. But uh, you're in slightly calmer conditions the further south you go and the further east you go, hence why we've got colder conditions here. But uh, where the winds are a little bit more brisk, we're seeing uh, uh, some transport import of, uh, of milder conditions the further west and the further north you go. And therefore we're seeing the mildest temperatures as a consequence. These were the maximum temperatures yesterday across the uk and uh, across ireland 11.5 uh, celsius at altnahara far cry from the minus nine that was seen back on friday and saturday afternoons and then obviously the minimum temperature of minus 18.9 celsius uh, on early saturday morning was uh, obviously the coldest for the uk since uh, 2010 for the month of january and uh, these are a couple of shots that i wanted to show you actually from my trip to Altmahara uh, the earlier hours of uh, Saturday morning. Uh, and this is essentially the, the, the route I took uh, up over the Struy Hill. I don't know if you know this uh, part of uh, Scotland, but uh, up over high ground, I was a little bit sorry to take that route actually because uh, the road was not in particularly great uh, condition uh, with thick snow and ice. Um, then I took uh, the, the road they uh, cut off um, at Boner Bridge and then up through Lerg, plenty of snow and ice, clear skies, the moon was shining, temperatures uh, between minus 14 and minus 18 Celsius. Then I finally got to Altnahara, Stay, stayed it for about uh, two, three hours, up, out and about, take some photographs, some video. Unfortunately, the, the my, my phone battery completely died to death in the, the minus 18 Celsius air. So therefore, I had to actually plug my phone back in to charge on the car and then record the uh, the report from inside the car. I was a wee bit disappointed because I was wanting to do it out in the elements itself. But uh, because of the, the, the phone dying, I had to, to resort to that. But you can see this was the road conditions. Uh, so kind of snow cover uh, versus some tracks, uh, 19 miles of single track road once you get north of Lurg. And uh, yeah, it was a lonely old road, it uh, has to be said. I sat in Altnahara for over two hours without a single car passing. So it just shows you the uh, the isolation uh, in this part of Sutherland in far northern Scotland. But uh, you can see the moon quite nicely in the picture. Look at the hoar frost on this uh, sign welcoming you into the village of Altnahara, home to about 50 people. There's the man himself and uh, there's another sign showing uh, just how cold it is. You can just literally see how cold it is. Uh, there's a lone gritter uh, just before sunrise uh, passing the car, uh, followed by another car. There's the weather station. The uh, the infamous reading of minus 18.9 was recorded within this uh, very frosty fence. 
so you've got the famous conditions uh, that uh, and the instrumentation that is within that fence that is the official Met Office weather station. But uh, you can see here the road uh, leading out of uh, of Al Nahara rather bleak, uh, but you can see how clear the sky was. It was an absolutely uh, spectacular morning, a uh, beautiful wintry morning for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is some of the scenes from Alt Nahara, the tiny village in the far north of Scotland. There's the weather station in a little bit more daylight here. You can see the Stevenson screen quite nicely. You can see the tower there with the, the wind vane on the top. Um, so yeah, beautiful conditions. There's the river uh, that passes uh, either through or past the village. I'm not quite sure whether it runs through it or not. Um, so yeah, uh, beautiful sunrise as well coming up and then once i left out nahara actually the the temperature gauge, gauge was actually the coldest it wasn't actually in the village itself it was sitting at around minus 16 minus 17 but then once i got uh, about maybe six or seven miles to the south uh, just past krask in and uh, the temperature uh, reached its lowest values of minus 19 celsius as can be seen here but uh, it was actually going uh, into the village initially that the car uh, briefly hit minus, uh, minus 19 Celsius. So a beautiful winter wonderland for sure in the Al Nahar area. Very different story now as the snow is very quickly melting. So, man Julian oscillation rotating into an amplified phase of 2 and 3 between day 5 through 10. So the uh, pink colours represent day 5, the orangey colours represent day 10. And uh, we're initially in phase one of the MJO. So this is my thinking. As we progress through the next 10 days, we're going to see the MJO amplified as it rotates through the Indian Ocean. And really once it gets towards phase three, which is uh, around day 10, that is my, where I think we're going to start to see a strengthening of the jet stream across the Atlantic exiting. Uh, North America, where we're seeing that uh, tightening of the, the, the temperature gradient, Arctic air getting drilled south. We've got a bit of a stretched polar vortex within the troposphere, allowing some cross-polar flow. So we're importing some of that the Siberian brand air over the top of the pole into eastern North America. That then tightens the thermal gradient, strengthens the strength of the jet. And with a phase two and three of the MGO, that tends to promote more zonality, but a an up and down temperature profile. It doesn't look as if we're going to see mega warmth when you get a strong jet. You've got areas of low pressure coming off a rather cold North America. Uh, and, and essentially what happens is some of these areas of low pressure kind of hold on to some of that cold sourced Canadian air across the Atlantic. And we're likely to see ups and downs in terms of uh, temperature. We are likely to see some mild, some cold, and a little bit of uh, everything in between. So if we look at the, the GFS model here, looking at North America in particular, this is the reasons behind the likely strengthening of the, uh, the, the, the jet stream here, because what happens is, as we play through this loop, this is a temperature anomaly chart, by the way, of the GFS, and this is looking at the, uh, the lower 48 of the United States here. And what happens is, as we play through this loop, you notice that we start to see by the time we reach the, the upcoming weekend and beyond into particularly next week, there's bitterly cold air starting to gather over Western Canada, moving into the Northern Rockies, the Northern Plains. We've got mild air ahead of this southbound Arctic air. So we are going to likely see some uh, unusual warmth uh, lifting east and northwards. But then the bitterly cold air comes southwards this is a piece of the tropospheric polar vortex, by the way, that is going to get dumped into the eastern, well, the majority of the United States, really. If you notice here, by the time we reach Monday, 20th of January here, so this is a, a, a week yesterday, uh, and you can see the, the bitterly cold conditions start to set in. As we see this Arctic air getting uh, driven southwards here, that's going to force the jet stream to strengthen, and we see these lobes these waves of bitterly cold Arctic air getting driven southwards into the central and eastern United States. And in turn, that is going to force the jet to strengthen. And with that phase two and three of the MGO, all the ingredients are kind of there in place for what potentially could be quite a stormy spell. And we'll look at the latest GFS run for Western Europe in just a second here. But notice here, 
this is the two mil 200 millibar uh, winds uh, so this is the jet stream level got a very strong jet core uh, uh, exiting from essentially texas through the mid-south exiting the mid atlantic region here we've got this split in the jet uh, over the central north atlantic thanks to anti-cyclonic conditions sinking air high pressure you've got one branch going north towards iceland you've got the secondary branch going down towards the canaries where unsettled conditions are likely here then as we continue to play through the course of next week you start to see this extension of that jet then moving out into the north atlantic here reasonably far south positioned as well which is interesting here and then we continue to play through this loop and you notice here we've got this jet stream very flat in nature that is your textbook um kind of uh, neutral north atlantic oscillation if not slightly positive but it looks as if it's more neutral in fact but you've got this positioning of the jet which is quite important meaning the areas of low pressure are likely to develop along this jet strengthen and essentially affect largely the southern half of the uk which means that we need to pay attention to the central and northern uk for being on the colder side of the jet and therefore we may actually see something slightly uh, cooler compared to normal with this more south displaced jet here so this is quite an interesting evolution of the pattern this is something that we're going to keep a very close eye on as we progress through the next day week to 10 days here on the channel so all the more reason if you haven't already done so to please hit that subscribe button and they uh, also drop a comment let's look at the the latest ecm run for the overview precept cloud temperature and pressure this is the here and now. We've got an area of high pressure largely dominating the majority of mainland Europe at the moment. Southwesterly winds on the western and northern flank of this high, meaning that we've got largely dry conditions through the remainder of this week across the bulk of the UK and Ireland. So it's a fairly mild setup underneath those winds, by the way. Underneath the high itself, not so mild. We're seeing that in terms of uh, of clear skies, light winds, cold conditions by nighttime with frost, fog forming, where you've got the air mixed on the western and northern flank of the high, you're in the milder conditions and therefore we're holding on to upper single figures to low double digits across Ireland and uh, particularly Scotland, uh, even through the overnight period when you've got this type of setup in place. Continue to play through the area of high pressure at near 1040 millibars holds on over Central Europe. UK finds itself in the western and northern flank of that high. Areas of low pressure then riding that split jet. Remember, there's one branch going south, one branch going north, seen just a second ago. And then we we'll start to see something slightly different as we move towards the upcoming weekend and beyond. We start to see the strengthening of the jet stream. Areas of low pressure then start to uh, energize that, uh, that jet. Uh, we we'll see them develop and deepen. Changes the shape of the synoptic pattern over the North Atlantic. And then we should start to see a bit of a breakdown developing within the high itself. It shows you here that it's actually still trying to hold on even towards the middle portions of next week. Then we have a bigger, more substantial change taking place. You notice here that we've got a 1052 millibar high just on the south the southeast shore of Greenland. We've got a lot of cold air getting dra drafted in on the southern flank of that low. So that circulation is drawn a lot of colder out of north america underneath this uh, this center of low pressure and what that's going to do is it's going to start to see uh, the development of lows along that boundary between something milder towards the, the the subtropical atlantic versus the north atlantic where we're on the cold side of the jet once you increase that thermal gradient within the north atlantic you're then going to start to essentially uh, draw that jet further further eastwards over the north atlantic let's put on the 850 temperatures real quick and you can see the contrast in air mass here and it's right on that boundary that you see the development of deep areas of low pressure and if we go back to the overview chart play through the sequence you can see these areas of low pressure developing along that boundary and it's with that phase two and the three of the mjo uh, that we could see some rapidly deepening features moving across the uk so look at this here long way out tuesday the 20th of january we've got a 977 millibar low deepening as it progresses across the uk but we also could be seeing snowy conditions 
on the north flank of the low as well and also on the back side. Remember 2013-2014 seen this where we've seen a lot of areas of low pressure moving across the southern half of the UK, colder conditions further north on the north side of the lows and we've seen plenty of snow especially over uh, medium to high ground over Scotland for example. We've seen mega, mega snow building up across uh, the north of the British Isles due to the positioning of these lows moving through. Finally, I want to show you the latest of the GFS with regards to the polar vortex. Polar stratospheric cloud alert, by the way, looks as if the core of the polar jet stream, uh, not jet stream, the polar vortex, I'll get there. The polar vortex looks as if it's not that far from the UK as we move towards the next several days. So therefore, if we've got sunny skies, look to the skies and see if we can see the development of some of these polar strat clouds because the, the, the core temperature within the PV, albeit is slightly displaced towards the North Atlantic, towards uh, the UK and Europe, hence why I'm saying look out for these uh, beautiful cloud, uh, cl cloud uh, uh, formations. Because we're underneath the core of the polar vortex, it looks like, as we progress through the course of this week, strong warming on the uh, your, uh, Asia to North America side of the pole, hence why we're seeing... These lobes of Arctic are getting driven into the, the United States here. We've got quite a coupled polar vortex, both within the strat, into the troposphere. And with this orientation, we've got this kind of cross polar flow. You can pretty much draw the, the line, the boundary between the unusual warmth versus unusual cold. It's essentially connecting Siberia with North America, allowing the colder to get driven south into North America. But look at this here. Uh, temperatures within the core expected to drop to minus 100 several times over as we progress through the course of this week and even down to as low as minus 102 103 celsius as we move towards the upcoming weekend here look at this here 103 below zero at 10 millibars seen by the gfs model here and look at this here the orientation of this is very important when you've got a vertically coupled uh, strat in the trope of the polar vortex and this orientation you're then going to see uh, lobes of bitterly cold air getting driven south over eastern north america through the final 10 days of the month but uh, when you've got that core sitting over the european side i would expect to see south displaced jet uh, deep areas of low pressure moving into western europe here and uh, i fully expect to see a potential stormy final 10 days or so of january so, you know, you've heard it here, possibly before uh, other sources. Let's wait and see what happens. This is not a guarantee, but I think there's a lot of different things coming together. The orientation, the position, and the stretch of the polar vortex, the core uh, leaning towards the UK, uh, MJO, phase three, uh, and everything's kind of showing uh, a, a stormier signal as we move towards the, the, the end of the period here. So very interesting times around at the moment. Hold on to the chill across, particularly southern and eastern areas of the UK at the moment. Much milder, Ireland, Northern Ireland and Scotland. Let's wait and see what happens in the coming next few weeks. Like and subscribe. See you next time with more. Bye for now.